Voiding urohydropulsion is a rapid method to remove small bladder stones without surgery. In this video, I'll show you how to select the right patient, the right anesthetic, and provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to successfully perform voiding urohydropulsion in the dog. Voiding urohydropulsion utilizes gravity to position urolis into the gravity-dependent portion of the bladder. This positioning and the use of manual micturition dilates the urethral lumen for successful removal of the urolis without the use of cystotomy. This is an x-ray of a 10-year-old, female spade, miniature schnauzer, with calcium oxalate bladder stones. After the bladder was filled with saline, it took 15 seconds to avoid all of her stones. Here are radiographs of four different dogs with stones. Which one is the best candidate for avoiding urohydropulsion? We will revisit these images in a couple of minutes to discuss the best candidate. To be successful, stones need to be smaller than the narrowest portion of the dilated urethra. When selecting the right patient, in general, the urethra of females is wider than in males. Therefore, avoiding urohydropulsion is easier to perform in females. You may question if this procedure can be performed in males. The answer is yes, as long as stones are smaller than the dilated urethra. How can you determine the size of the urethral lumen? One way is to measure the size from a urethrogram, but this is expensive and time consuming. A simpler way is to pass urinary catheters of increasing sizes. If you can easily pass an 8 French catheter, the urethra should be able to accommodate a 2.7 millimeter or smaller stone. Some other things to consider is choosing patients that are easier to lift, treating urinary tract infections before avoiding, cautiously lifting patients with back disease, consider intensive monitoring for risky anesthetic patients, and it may be beneficial for patients with recurring bladder stones. Selecting the right anesthetics. Your anesthetic protocol should anesthetize the patient to sufficiently relax the urethra and abolish urethral pain. Many anesthetic protocols for general surgery are appropriate. However, for urethral relaxation, patients often need a deeper plane than what is required to open the abdomen. To achieve a deeper anesthetic plane, consider administering a bolus of propofol, 0.5 to 1 mg per keg IV, just prior to voiding. Intraurethral local anesthetics or epidural anesthetics to effectively relax the urethra may be beneficial. We are unsure about using dexmedetomidine because of its potential to activate the sympathetic nervous system, which can tighten the urethra. Selecting the right urolith. Uroliths need to be smaller than the smallest portion of the urethra. Round stones are more easily voided than jagged ones. Smooth stones pass through the urethra more easily than rough stones. Fewer stones pass through the urethra more readily than many stones. When voiding difficult stones, they should be much smaller than the urethra, two-thirds to one-half the urethral diameter. And lastly, stones on the urethra indicate that they are too large to be voided. Here are our four images again of patients with stones. In image A, the stone is large and irregular, so not the best candidate. In image B, these stones look larger than the urethral diameter in this male dog. In image C, the dog has a urethral stone, indicated by the red arrow, meaning that it is already too large to be avoided. Therefore, image D is our best candidate. It is a female, and the stones are round, smooth, and many of them are small. So how do we perform voiding urohydro propulsion? First, we'll need the right equipment. A urethral catheter, stopcock, sterile saline, surgical scrub, a large volume syringe, sterile gloves, sterile lubricant, and a bowl or some other alternative to collect the urine and stones. Here are the steps for performing voiding urohydro propulsion. We'll individually go through these steps over the next several slides. Step 1. Scrub the area to aseptically catheterize the urethra. For females, consider digital palpation or a speculum or otoscope to visualize the opening. Step 2. Fill the bladder with any sterile isotonic fluid to maximally distend it. The normal bladder holds approximately 10 mils per kg, but we use palpation to assess fullness. 
You know the bladder is full when fluid leaks around the catheter. Step 3. Remove the catheter. Step 4. If fluid leaks out, occlude the urethra using digital pressure. Step 5. Position the patient so that the spine is vertical. If the patient is large, they can be tilted up in a trough or positioned on a tiltable table. Step 6. Gently agitate the bladder to position stones near the urethra, which can be seen here in this video. Step 7. Apply steady digital pressure to the bladder to induce voiding and flush stones out of the urinary tract. This first video demonstrates voiding in a small male dog. You'll see that the urethra is occluded, then unoccluded, and steady digital pressure is applied to the abdomen. This produces a nice stream of urine that's being collected into a cup, along with the stones that are being voided. Here's an image of the stones that were produced during that voiding process. This video demonstrates voiding in a female dog. You'll see that the urethra is occluded, then unoccluded, the bladder was agitated, and steady digital pressure is applied to produce a nice steady stream of urine that is collected into a bowl, along with the stones. Here are the stones that were produced from that voiding process. The last video demonstrates voiding in a large dog. This may require assistance to properly lift and position the dog. You'll see that the bladder is agitated, the urethra is unoccluded, and the patient is lifted. Then steady digital pressure is applied to the abdomen to produce a nice steady stream of urine that's collected into a cup. During this process, you can see some of the stones hitting the side of the cup as they're being collected. Here are images of the stones collected from that process. What about post-procedural management? Radiographs should be taken of the voided patient. This imaging technique will identify radiopaque and larger stones. A double contrast cystogram can also be beneficial to evaluate for radiolucent stones or smaller stones. Both methods will confirm the integrity of the bladder. Post-procedural medications should include a short course of antibiotics, about one to two days. This can be dependent on the sterility of the procedure, comorbidities, and the amount of trauma induced. Pain medications are also prescribed to manage discomfort and inflammation from the procedure. As with most procedures, there are potential complications that an individual may encounter. What if a urethra becomes lodged in the urethra during voiding? The stone is too large to be voided and needs to be retrogradedly flushed back into the bladder. Once in the bladder, the stone can be removed surgically via cystotomy or reduced in size using laser lithotripsy. Basketing the stone may be beneficial in certain circumstances. For a male dog, a collection device can be made out of souffle cups or equivalent. The size of the cups will be determined based on the size of your patient and their bladder capacity. A clear cup is required for evaluation of a steady stream and visualization of urolith removal. A hole is cut into the side of the cup and should be large enough to easily collect urine. The edges of the hole can be modified using tape or gauze to reduce any trauma to the penis or skin. In females, a bowl is utilized for collection of urine and stones. What if the patient is a large dog? A different positioning orientation is typically the only adjustment that needs to be made. A trough or a table can be utilized for tilting of the patient to about 55 degrees from horizontal. This is sufficient for the stones to be successfully voided. Additional assistance may be required to control the legs and the head of the patient while the patient is being voided. How many times should the patient be voided throughout the procedure? This is variable and will depend on the quality of the voidings. If there is a strong and steady stream each time, if stones cease from being voided, and if radiographs confirm the successful removal of stones, no further voidings are required. Thank you for watching.